Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Adeen with Christian Encouragement. Now guys, I just want to thank you to all my patient, patient subscribers. Uh, today, I have an interesting video. We're going to talk about faith. And yes, since we're talking about faith, I want you to examine yourself. I want you to examine your heart. I want you to reflect during this video. And this is, to those of you who are new to this channel, this is a channel for solely Christian encouragement to build your faith, to strengthen you as you walk on this Christian journey. So today, I want to ask you the question, what type of faith do you have? And can you be commended for your faith? Now, stick around after the break. We'll be right back. <laughs> jumping into the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Now Hebrews chapter 11, everyone knows that. That's the faith chapter. Now these men, these ancient men are commended for their faith. Like Enoch, he was taken away from life. He did not see death. He was taken up into heaven. Now Noah, he actually went straight into building something that he had never experienced prior to, the, to that day of the flood. Noah had no idea what a rain was. The people had no idea what a rain was, a flood was. They had no idea. But here it is. It's through faith that these men of olden days were able to still enter into the kingdom of God. They still entered into the promise that God had given from the beginning of time in order. Because of their faith, they were able to enter into that. So, um... I've been reflecting uh, a little bit on the book of Hebrews and um, chapter 11 is one of those chapter that you have to talk about. Now while doing that, um, I got some notations that I want to share with you. So of course, um, it made me reflect on David, the three Hebrew boys, their faith. Um, it made me reflect on Noah. It made me reflect on Moses and these men had faith that you know, persons would say in this day, in this age, that, hey, this is crazy. And that's exactly what we ought to be for God. We ought to be crazy for God. We ought to be crazy for um, just being in the presence and in God holistically. So, um, as a child of God, where does your faith lie? All right, where does your faith lies and what exactly, uh, to what extent does your faith go? Now, are you a follower, follower of Christ Jesus because you're doing it because others are doing it? Are you a follower of Christ Jesus because you get to bargain with him and get what you want when you bargain? Or are you confident in him that even if he does not does what he, you want him to do, then you're still standing on his word now I would like to name some of these um, call the names a little bit crazy yeah but I'd like to name some of these and I'm gonna tell you why I name them um, I have cowardly faith you know cowards sometimes we do things not because we want to but because the larger percentage of people around us is actually doing it and for me David stood out, um, not David, was it? not David, Joseph stood out at that point because here, here he was, and also the three Hebrew boys, um, not Joseph, Daniel, yeah, Daniel in the lion's den, yeah, Daniel, he stood out to me, reasoning being, for reasons, the Jews were taken into captivity, right? Now follow me, I'm going somewhere with this. And um, it wasn't just, it wasn't just um, Daniel or the three Hebrew boys that were there, that were worshipers of God, right? But when King Nebuchadnezzar 
made his decree that no one should worship any other god they still stood on what they believed they weren't cowards and it doesn't matter what happens they were at the position to say i'm willing to disobey this king in order to stand out and the others many times we focus on the three hebrew boys and daniel and stuff like that but what about the others there was a large percentage of people who were taken into captivity they were worshipers of god but yet still they did not because they were cowards they did not stand up for what they believe in because they were cowards so is it that your faith is more of the larger percentage of people who will not stand out because they are cowards or will your faith be like Daniel and the three Hebrew boys that decided that I'm gonna disobey this king because what he is saying does not come in alignment with what God has spoken over me and so that, that that's one aspect of the faith and there's another um, that I'd like to call the tit for tat many of us including myself I remember when I was young I would make small bargains with my parents I I still do that perhaps sometimes even now you know making small bargain okay mom if you do this then I'll do that and sometimes we find ourselves doing that to God like when I was going to school I would say to God if you make me pass this exam then I'll do anything <laughs> how many of you are actually guilty of that be truthful now I am so guilty of that um, just wanting to pass an exam or to do something and then say yeah I'll do anything but there comes a time in your life when you have to be mature there comes a time in your life when you have to know what you want and where your faith stands and are you gonna be that there's two words that comes to mind bargaining but tit for tat because you know it's like oh you 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 give me this I give you that if you do that for me I do this for you but it should never be that in your in on your walk with God um, it's not if you do this Lord then I will do that you should know that this is what you believe in this is the God who created the universe this is the God who created you and he knew all of your days before one of them were formed he knows your heart he knows what you're capable of doing he knows your expectations and he has made you with all the intricacies that you have so how can you bargain with someone who knows you better than yourself I think for me you have to be mature enough to understand that the Holy Spirit he will give you what you desire to a point to a point because if you're asking for something that will not bring glory to neither God nor the kingdom of God but for personal gains and for um, ill gain and foolish you will not get it it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks in your sight you will not get it so we have to come to a place where we're no longer tit for tat faith persons we're not bargaining or faith but we are mature enough to stand and when God says no it means no for a reason one of my favorite one of my favorite songs I would say is um, spirit leads me um, because it says if you say go then I will go if you say to jump I'm diving in if you say to stop I'm yeah 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 that's that that same song so it it, it helps me to, to, to give perspective on what God says and what I will do and how much to what extent I will do it it's never gonna be a case of Lord I need this to be happening because that's what I need and if you can allow this if you can only allow this to happen then I will do that so um, I want you as I said this video is more of an examination you know I want you to examine yourself identify the types of faith and um, see where yours at and if you are if you have found yourself guilty in any way then I need you to work on it it, it is important for us to examine ourselves. it is important for us to reflect on who we are and what we do so that we do not become um, cast out of the kingdom of God so that we do not be thrown aside because bear in mind the Word of God says if you do not produce the fruit of the Spirit and all of that then the Father will prune those bushes cut those leaves off and you will be tossed into the fire and I want for each of us to examine the next um, 
the next one that I have here is the courageous faith and on the flip side of the Hebrew boys and Daniel um, versus the the large percentage of Jews that went into captivity I think the, the Hebrew boys here and Daniel they represented the courageous faith they represent the even if kind of faith and I love what they said so much they said and even if or God does not deliver us we will not because we have to know who we serve as a people, as a body. There's no other religion in the world that doubts their God. And their God has eyes and can't see, ears and can't hear, mouth and can't speak. Their gods are not omnipresent. Their God did not create the universe. But we as Christians, we serve the true and living God, the God that created you me and everything in it psalm 27 comes to mind that says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein everything that dwell therein belongs to god so if we serve that god and we are confident that even if we should die lose our life here on earth we still are going towards the crown of glory we are still waiting to be to receive to say the same thing as Paul says I have fought the good fight I have kept the faith I have finished the race and now awaits me the crown of glory in heaven if we know that then even if God does not save us and you know it comes to mind Stephen Stephen knew Jesus he knew what awaited him and even if he didn't get the full picture he was even if faith believer he's like they stoned him and even though they stoned him to death he says Christ is the Messiah repent the kingdom of God is at hand and he held on to what he believed in and he he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God cheering him on welcome welcoming him home and so for me I just want you to know that this is where I would hope and want all persons to be a courageous faith a confident faith and even if kind of a situation I have here Peter didn't even know when Peter walked out on the water Peter didn't know that he was going to sink he didn't know that he would he, he would basically walk on the water he just stepped out there because his eyes were focused on God even if I'm sinking I'm gonna walk out because Jesus said I perhaps reality hit him in the middle of his journey to walk in on the water like what am I doing I'm walking on water he sunk because the, the, the fact of the matter is like sometimes we're on this Christian journey and when we're walking the awesome we're, we're we're caught up into the glory and the awesomeness of God which is where we are supposed to be but then it's like a shoe coming out of the middle of nowhere and smacking us in the hey there is obstacle ahead there are trials ahead and you start focusing on certain trials and then you start sinking into certain situation you start to worry you start to cry you start to focus on the situation rather than where you were originally focusing before which is on Christ Jesus that he is the one that is able to pull you up and hold you together so Peter I believe in this case he was able to see for a moment that hey even though or even if I might sing I'm going to Jesus Abraham didn't know if God was gonna supply a sacrifice for him he didn't know that he just by faith he just obeyed what God had you know but each person has to step out in faith trusting God right God says he is the Alpha and the Omega he is the beginning and the end he is the first and the last and so even if these are some scenarios I want to put before you even if I'm drowning I'm coming to meet you Lord even if I'm eaten by lions I won't stop worshiping you God because I'm not gonna worship idols even if I'm burnt to death I won't worship idols even if I don't get another sacrifices sacrifice I will still worship God because he is the giver of life even if the kings throw the spies away or they didn't let down the spies through the window or anything then I'm trusting that the real God 
because today we are brought into the promise of the Jews, the same promise that was given into Abraham, it's the same promise to us. And even though we're grafted into his plan, we need to have some faith that even though things might not seem the way they are, we don't need a tit for tat phase. We're not bargaining, we're not kids anymore. We're not drinking milk anymore. And even if you're still drinking milk, I want you to learn that you have to get out of that zone and grow up into the even if faith. And we're not going to sit down and say, oh, the crowd, no one is standing out. I'm not gonna be a coward faith anymore. I'm gonna be a courageous faith because in the end, a crown of glory will be waiting you, waiting for you. You know, the life you live really is a result of the faith you have. Let me say that again. I'm going to leave you with this. The life you live is really as a result of the faith you have. The life you live will tell who you belong to and where your faith lies, right? And Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. I want you to reflect on what type of faith you have. What type of faith do you want to have? And what does your life reflect? Is it that you are reflecting a coward faith? Are you reflecting a tit for tat faith? Or are you reflecting a courageous faith? I want you to ruminate on this concept and pray over it. I hope to see you soon. Thank you for listening to this video and let's pray over you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will be with this listener. I pray that you will cover them under your blood. May your spirit lead them and grow in them more and more each day. Lord God, let there be no hindrances on this word and let it accomplish that which you have set it out to accomplish. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give you thanks. Amen. See you guys. Thank you for listening and have a beautiful day. Bye. God bless you.